other stories, the International Rice Research Institute, or the IRI, has proposed to the government a nine-point program that aims to boost Philippine rice production and avert a potential food crisis. To tell us more about this program, we're joined here in the studio by IRI senior scientist, Dr. Bas Bowman. Dr. Bowman, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Um, I suppose uh, this nine-point program uh, should have been uh, a long time in coming because we should have anticipated maybe the problems that we're facing now with our rice production. Well, that's right. And in fact, when many people who read our nine program, point mm. program, they say, well, what's new in there? <laughs> and we say, well, this is what we have been telling the world for the last 15, 20 years maybe, that right. governments, people have become complacent. Um, yields have not been increasing that fast anymore. Agricultural production, grain price, grain yields have not kept up with population growth and demand. Um, but people are complacent. When there is cheap food, when it is plenty, then you feel like you're a caller in the desert and nobody listens. How much of this program is about science and how much of it is about <coughs> political will? I think right now it is it's, it's urgency. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there is a, a rice price crisis and we need to get more food out there. So part of the program is in getting technologies out that we have invested in the last couple of years of, of making sure that they are right. Mm -hmm. So we have technologies that um, are aimed at boosting yield. Um, currently, the average national average yield in the Philippines is 3.8 tons per hectare. The yield potential, determined by the climate, by the varieties that we grow, is about 6 to 8 ton in the wet season, 8 to 10 ton in the dry season. So you see there, there is a, a, a huge yeah. yield uh, gain that can be uh, accomplished. Mm. And we know we have technologies, um, better water management, better nutrient management, protecting the yield that is harvest, so post-harvest um, operations. So we feel that by rolling out these technologies, make sure they get into the hands of the farmers, we can already do a lot on the short term. Right. So our uh, rice managers not applying the technologies that should have already been there and have already been recommended by the IRI? It is the, it's always in, in science, and especially in agriculture, it takes a long time to get the new products to the farmers. Mm. It, it's very different than other industries, like a Coca-Cola bottle. Yeah. You can instantly, basically, increase the capacity of an industry. Here we deal with millions of farmers, and they are usually poor farmers, so they are not well connected to market systems, not well connected to information. So it, it takes a long time when a technology has been proven by scientists yeah. before it is finally um, seen and accepted by the farmers. I understand that your specialty, actually your field of study is water management. Uh, in, in some uh, papers you're referred to as an agroecologist. Yes. And I've read about some of your recommendations that perhaps uh, rice yields could actually be increased in the country even with lower supplies of water even with maybe minimal irrigation, how have your studies into that uh, progressed? It is not so much rice yield can be increased with less water. Mm -hmm. um, water is a necessary ingredient to get high yields. But um, we have demonstrated that using less water, 15 to 30 percent less water, the yield can remain the same. Mm -hmm. But with that water that you save, you can irrigate 30 percent more area and create the same amount of yield. So your total production becomes higher. And that's what we have been working with the um, NIA, National Irrigation Administration, yes. Bureau of Soil and Water Management, mm. Phil Rice, mm. um, Central Luzon State University, Bulacan Agricultural College, to basically now get these technologies in the hands of farmers mm. and integrate these technologies in the management of irrigation systems. So there is an optimum use of water to actually increase the yield per hectare? No, to increase the production mm -hmm. over a total area. So one farmer will not see his yield getting increased. Okay. But instead of 80 farmers getting irrigation water, now you would have 110 farmers irrigation water. And together these 110 produce more than 80. Mm -hmm. So these water saving technologies, they can help produce more food at the country level. 
they are not so good per se in alleviating poverty of an individual farmer. Mm. Um, he can get the same yields, but he will not see higher yields. For that, we need to look into um, better fertilizer management, um, better weed control, use better quality seed. So right. a large part of Iris recommendations are basically use high quality certified seeds mm. that farmers can obtain through fill rice and other certified uh, agencies in the Philippines. Well, I think since this uh, entire rice crisis issue uh, gained prominence in the news, uh, some of the analysts have been pointing out that it's not per se a uh, problem with the yield uh, of agricultural rice lands, but more of how rice lands have been disappearing because they've been converted to either residential or industrial use. I don't believe that the disappearance of land has contributed that much. Um, when you look at the statistics in the Philippines, rice land, an uh, area of harvested rice has in fact been increasing. Um, it was about 4 million hectares still in um, 20, uh, 2005. Mm -hmm. Now in 2007 it's already 4.2 million hectares. How is, um, that, how, how did, how is that possi possible? Um, Investment in irrigation, uh -huh. so the NIA has been upgrading irrigation infrastructure, so land that was previously not irrigated now is irrigated, it allows for double cropping, so instead of only relying on rainfall in the wet season, yeah. the farmer can now crop in the dry season as well, mm. new um, areas that have been taken into production. The, the visibility of disappearance of rice lands is just so high because they disappear close to the cities right. and that's where most of the people live. So when you move out of Manila or Tarlac or any of the major cities, you s tend to see, hey, wait a minute, 10 years ago there was a rice field here and now there's a supermarket. Right. But the, the, the area, mm -hmm. I think in total, when you look at the national average, is not that high. It's actually increased, you said. At the national level, yeah. ac according to the data that I saw uh, presented by Phil Rice mm -hmm. in their um, um, uh, uh, master plan for rice, these the, the areas uh, seems to be increasing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you you mentioned that there are technologies that somehow don't make it to the farmers precisely because they can't afford some of these technologies. What about things like high yield grains, high yield seeds? Are these some things that can be given to the farmers maybe at a lower cost? It's not that they can't afford it. It is more that it is a very difficult process to of getting the, no, to getting the technologies to the farmer. Oh, okay. The process is that, um, suppose I'm, I'm a brilliant scientist, which everybody seems to agree with, ex yes. especially <laughs> my wife. Um, and I have a brilliant idea. Okay. And I test it, I do a field experiment, and lo and behold, my idea indeed is brilliant. Yeah. The main question is then, how do I translate that into a very simple message and how does that message reach millions of farmers? Mm. So it's basically a publicity campaign. But in agricultural sector, we're not so good in publicity. <laughs> so we have mm. extension agents um, and it, it's a very um, diverse landscape in the Philippines. Department of Agriculture has an extension mandate. Phil Rice has an extension mandate, NIA has it, BSWM. Um, so all these agencies need to get somehow involved in translating a brilliant idea into something that a farmer is willing to test. Now, mm -hmm. farmers are usually pretty conservative. Um, they would say, yeah, but you know, my father did it this way and his father did it that way. So you need to convince a farmer first to give it a try. Is that what's happening now in the countryside, do you think? That most Filipino farmers are resisting new ideas because it, it goes against the traditional methods that they're used to? I think resisting is a strong word, Too but strong. you need to overcome some suspicious, uh, okay. suspicion. suspicion. Uh, you need to show them that it works. Mm -hmm. um, a farmer doesn't have a lot of money indeed to risk on this, so he is risk averse. Mm -hmm. You need to show him. If it works, he will be convinced, and, and that's where you want to be, because they then become the champion farmers. There's nothing so good to disseminate a technology as having a local champion who will adopt the technology and basically mm -hmm. show his neighbors, hey guys, look, it's, it's really working.